This is Ask Dr. E, where Dr. Michael Easley answers your biblical or theological questions in 10 minutes or less. Today's question comes from Becca. Hey there, Dr. E. I'm not sure what your theology or anything is, but I have been exploring it a lot lately and found, of course, I just want to believe what the Bible says outside of religion or denomination. Because of that, I have noticed we tend to evangelize only to those who don't know Jesus at all. I think I am just curious how important it is to evangelize to, say, Catholics or those who aren't exactly believing everything theologically correct. I understand Mormons believe very different things about God and Jesus and can see why we would need to spread the gospel to them. But what about people who are believing Mary was sinless or that we have to work for our faith? How do we go about this? Thank you, Becca. Okay, Dr. E. (laughs) <laughs> well, Becca doesn't know much about me, does she? That's okay. That's good. We're, we're glad. We're glad you're asking, Becca. So I, I was raised very devout Roman Catholic. Um, all of my siblings went to parochial schools. My parents went to daily mass every day. Uh, Sixty-two plus years of marriage before my dad died, and my mom continued to go to daily mass. So I was grabbed by the ear at about five thirty in the morning. Uh, in summers to serve 6.15 a.m. Mass as an altar boy. Will you let me sleep? Um, Uncle was a Monsignor, aunt was a Mother Superior, on and on, so we were Catholic. And uh, anyway, all that to say, let's take a step back and let's ask the question, um, as opposed to identifying with a denomination, do we evangelize Mormons or Baptists or Lutherans or Catholics or, you know, Methobacterians, whatever you want to say. Sorry, Sorry, what? Um, let, let's talk about our relationships. And in the conversational sphere that we have with friends and family, do we talk about Christ? And let's start there. I, I think it, it's helpful to say, can I talk about the Lord in a conversation? I've got some non-Christian neighbors, and you know, I season that conversation with Jesus talk, if you will. And I might quote a scripture. I might talk about, you know, I read the Bible and today, and it said, such and such, and just to see how things go. Um, if, if we focus on, you know, a denomination, I think we're going to get hamstrung. So let, let's focus on a couple things. Number one, you need a method. You need a way to talk about Christ that's comfortable. And, and Hannah, if we have time, we can talk about the bad news, good news approach that I like to use. It's four verses and four illustrations. It's, it's like the Roman road. But you need something that's easy for you to, and you need a framework. You need a way to talk about it. So, for example, I use Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23, Romans 5.8, and Ephesians 2.8 and 9. And I talk about those with four very simple illustrations that Larry Moyer taught me many, many years ago. And and just to see how people respond to that. And that gives a conversation not based on our religion, or our denomination, but on what the Bible says. Uh, and then let's be clear about the gospel. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 to 5, we have perhaps one of the best definitions where Paul talks about Christ lived, he died, he was buried, he came back from the dead. And then we would say, any and all who trust in Christ and Christ alone for their salvation are given the free gift of salvation forgiveness of sins, and eternal life of Christ. So we want to focus on the main thing. Now, let the, let's, let's go into some of these questions that may arise. Well, what about Mary? And, you know, as a Catholic, there's a big move in Catholicism to make Mary a co-redemptress, that we have to believe in Mary as the ever-virgin mother of God, or we can't possibly even get near heaven and and you know some of this stuff gets pretty complex um sidebar my friend ron rhodes has a series of books called reasoning from the scriptures and they're, they're digestible they're shorter books and he has one on reasoning from the scriptures for catholics so if i had a catholic friend and we were talking about it and these kind of conversations came up and i didn't know how to answer the mary question the brothers and sisters question and so forth, I'd say, hey, why don't you and I go through a little book together? Let's read some scripture 
and read a book for, we'll meet once a week for four or five weeks and just have a conversation over coffee. Um, the, the one thing I would encourage you, Catholics in particular, and I would say most denominations, people want to go to heaven. A lot of people believe in Jesus. A lot of people know they're sinners. Let the Word of God and God's Spirit deal with them on some of these, let's call them extemporaneous issues that aren't that important theologically. They are important, but they're not crucial to the gospel. So my approach is let's be sure a person has a relationship with Christ, not a religious relationship. In other words, religion is doing or not doing, do's and don'ts. If I do these things and don't do these things, maybe I'll go to heaven. You know what you need to do. Where a relationship with Christ says I'm depending on the person and work of Christ who died in my place on my behalf instead of me and entrusting in Christ and Christ alone, I can know that I know that I know that I'm saved and secure with him forever. And that assurance of salvation is what's missing from a religion, do's and don'ts. I'm not real sure, which is why we have purgatory, why we have the rosary, why we're you know, burning off our sins or praying away our sins. Nope, Christ died for my sins. And so this is a differentiation, relationship or religion. And if you want to be an apologetic person and study world religions and try to defend doctrines, great. We need people like that. Most of us aren't going to go there. So let's focus on a relationship with Christ, God's word, God's spirit, and let that work in people's lives. And I think you'll be surprised. Uh, number one, it's easy to talk to people about Christ that way. And secondly, you're trusting God, not you or me having to have all the precise answers. Yeah, yeah. A couple of things. So one, I mean, traveling back all the way to the beginning, something I learned from a friend of ours who really just, I just was, I watched her in so many relationships with non-believers and she really modeled, she spoke the exact same way to me who was on the same page with her theologically you know, a believer as she did to someone who didn't know the Lord at all. And it was the first time that I kind of went, huh, I don't do that. I talk to my non-Christian friends differently than I talk to my Christian friends. And I, I decided one day, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to flip switch. Let's do this. And you know, and, I, and you try not to use Christianese language because we can get real churchy speak. Um, so not using terms that don't mean anything, but just you know, telling folks, you know, man, something that's really been weighing on me. I've been praying about it a lot. I actually read a verse, just like you were saying. It's like just talking to everyone is assuming that they know Christ <laughs> and how that opens doors. They start asking questions. Um, and then the other thing that I was reminded of as you were talking is, you know, I think the core of what you were saying is we need to help folks make sure that they understand the gospel and issues that are salvific, that relate to salvation, all these other theological things, we're never going to all agree and no one has it all right. So, you know, all these things are, um, some are more important than others. Some are like tier six. <laughs> Does that really matter? But, um, I was reminded this weekend and I learned this from you. When we look at the thieves on the cross with Christ, that thief that turned to the Lord Jesus and said, remember me. And Jesus looked at him and said, today you will be with me in paradise. And I was having a conversation with a my seminary professor last week. I was having to defend um, that the Lord's Supper isn't salvific, that baptism isn't salvific. And I said, I talked a bunch of stuff and it, it was in church this weekend. I like went, I should have just said the thief on the cross. <laughs> like he didn't do any of that stuff, you know? Uh, all he did was recognize that Christ was the Messiah and that was that was it. The, the gospel is simple and theology is profound. And we need theology. We need the constructs to understand, you know, Mariolatry, wor the worship of Mary is a problem. But that's not the way I'm going to talk to my Catholic friend. And um, again, I, I think the church has done a great disservice attacking the Catholics or attacking said denomination. And I, I Behind it, maybe, Becca, they're well-intended, but I think at heart it's insecurity on our own part, maybe. Um, I just think if we're at ease with our relationship with God, 
We're at ease with our relationship talking about Jesus Christ like Hannah's friend. Uh, I think it has a lot more gravitas today with people that don't trust authority, that don't trust a person that has all the right answers. And, you know, if you will, the clear, to me, the clarity, the older I get, clarity and precision is so important. What is the gospel? What are you believing? And when you ask any of your friends, even, quote, evangelical friends, you know, how do you know you're going to heaven for sure? What, what do people say to that? And, you know, the third person question is a great way to say it, right? What do people say about how to get to heaven? Kind of the man on the street. Here's the other thing I've learned over the years. I may have the best answer in my head, and I know how to answer it, but it's something I said off the cuff <laughs> that a person comes up and says, you know, years ago, you said such and such. I don't remember saying that, but that was the tipping point. So what I mean by that is I call it imperceptible influence. You don't know how God's going to use you. So stay with your friend no matter what their denominational affiliation is and love them and, and as Hannah said, season in that conversation the way you would talk to Christians about what you're learning, what the Lord's teaching you. Um, I read a verse today, and it really confused me. It really encouraged me. It really helped me. And you'll be surprised how God will use. We're depending on God's word and God's spirit, not how clever we uh, might want to be. All right. Thanks for writing, Rebecca. And if you've got a question for